Across the history of Tower Defense Simulator, there has been an impressive amount of bosses. These bosses vary significantly in difficulty and strength, so in this video, I'll be going over the 10 strongest bosses in TDS history. Before I continue, do me a favor, hit that like button and subscribe to join the Blue Hair Mafia. It helps me out a lot and I really appreciate it. Also, if you want to talk to me, suggest videos, or maybe even be in one, consider joining the Blue Head Mafia Discord. It's a great time, and I hope to see you there. In 10th place, we have Wax the Fox, one of the relatively newer bosses in the game. It has 250,000 health, or 275,000 when doing the Lost Souls challenge. Its base speed is slow, but this can be increased using one of its abilities. It has 5 abilities, its first one being a jump scare, which reduces the range of all your towers by 50%. This can actually be really detrimental as it can make some of your towers no longer be able to hit the boss. Its second ability throws a cake into the air which falls on its hat breaking into smaller pieces. These pieces of cake fall down and create shockwaves that stun any towers within the blast radius. Its third ability shoots out multiple coins from its mechanical hand which creates shockwaves upon landing stunning your towers once again. For its fourth ability, Walks the Fox will play its guitar which emits a shockwave stunning all nearby towers. It also creates lightning bolts which hit random towers also stunning them. Its fifth and final ability activates once Wax the Fox reaches half health. Its speed is increased from slow to slightly slow and it uses a jump scare ability once again. Because of the insane amount of stunning abilities, Medic is pretty much required to beat Wax the Fox. That being said, if you have the Medic, the boss ends up being pretty easy as its health is relatively low and the Medic can just negate the majority of its abilities. But ahead of Wax the Fox, in 9th place, we have the final boss for the 2021 Halloween event, Jackalbot. Jackalbot had 350,000 health, making it overall much tankier than Wax the Fox. It did have an extremely slow walk speed, but its three abilities made up for this. For its first ability, Jackalbot fires lasers from its right arm, sweeping around and stunning any tower's hit. Its second ability would fire out three explosive pumpkins at random towers, which would explode and stun all towers within radius. But its most powerful ability would have Jackalbot stand still and summon various enemies. Unlike stuns, you can't simply negate this using a medic, and ends up being a much more significant issue. In 8th place, we have the final boss for the Xmas 2020 event, Krampus. Krampus had 400,000 health and a very slow walk speed. It had 5 powerful abilities, with its first ability having a slime staff into the ground, sending out shockwaves that will stun any tower's hit. Its second ability summoned a ton of powerful enemies, such as yetis, deep freezes, and more. For its third ability, Krampus would create a line of ice using its staff, freezing all towers in front of it. When it got to half of its health, Krampus would enter rage mode, increasing his health by 100,000. In this phase, Krampus unlocked a new ability which would summon a snowstorm, causing a deep fog to occur and rain icicles which would stun towers for a long period of time. Overall, Krampus' abilities were much more difficult to deal with compared to Jackalbot, and that paired with its higher health made it overall a much stronger boss. In 7th place, we have the final boss for the 2021 Halloween event, the Nuclear Fallen King. The Nuclear Fallen King had 500,000 health and a slightly slow walk speed, which is the fastest base speed out of any of the bosses so far. It had a whopping 6 abilities. Its first ability was a summon, which spawned things like fallen heroes, circuits, which could speed up other enemies, and amalgamations, which had 5,000 health and could heal themselves. For its second ability, the Nuclear Fallen King would teleport into the air and strike downwards, making a huge shockwave that would stun any towers within its radius. Its third ability was a 360 degree spin with its sword, stunning all nearby towers. His fourth ability was Acid Rain, which would create acid puddles that stun Taj for a long period of time and summon Greed Lightning, stunning random towers. The thing is, this ability would actually occur after every other ability was used, making the Nuclear Fallen King significantly harder. The fifth ability was a block, where the Nuclear Fallen King would protect itself with its shield, making it temporarily immune to all sources of damage. Finally, its sixth ability was its Rage Mode, which would activate at half health. When in Rage Mode, the Nuclear Fallen King would raise its arms up, summoning 2-4 Fallen Guardians and being temporarily immune. It would also enter Rage Mode, increasing its attack frequency and improving its walk speed to only below average instead of slightly slow. One of the biggest issues when dealing with this boss was the circuits. If they were not quickly dealt with, they could speed up the boss and cause it to zoom past your defenses. Because of this and its powerful abilities, the Nuclear Fallen King was a very cool and difficult boss. In 6th place, we have the final boss of Badlands 2, the Gunslinger. The Gunslinger has 600,000 HP and a slow walk speed. It has 4 abilities. For its first one, the Gunslinger takes out his revolver and shoots multiple different towers, each shot creating shockwaves which stun surrounding towers. Its second ability has to fire its double barrel shotgun into the air, raining shells across the map which create shockwaves upon impact. For its third ability, the Gunslinger takes out a Gatling gun from its coffin which rotates and fires, stunning towers temporarily. Its fourth and final ability activates once it reaches half health, in which it takes out both of its weapons and screams, increasing its 
speed and temporarily reducing the range of all nearby towers by 50%. It also has a chance to summon a sandstorm, making it difficult to see. While the nuclear Fallen King have much more threatening abilities, the fact that the Gunslinger walks along a very short straight line makes it a lot harder to kill in time, especially considering it has 100k more health. In 5th place, we have the Curator, a boss that showed up in the Hidden Wave which was a secret feature that was removed in December of 2021. It had 600 HP but a below average walk speed, which is the fastest base speed out of any boss so far. It had 3 abilities, its first one summoning a variety of Hidden Wave enemies, with the strongest being the Developer 3 enemy which had a whopping 50,000 HP. Its third ability was a basic stomp which sounded out a stunning shockwave and its final ability allowed it to shoot up purple lightning bolts which would stun random selected towers. While its stunning abilities aren't as severe as the gunslinger, its summon made it way more difficult. Being able to casually summon enemies with 50,000 HP is absolutely insane and why I placed it above the gunslinger. In fourth place, we got the final boss of the 2021 Xmas event, the Frost Spirit. The Frost Spirit has a huge health increase compared to the Creator, having a whopping 1 million HP, which is 400,000 more than the Creator. And while it does have a very slow walk speed, its ability and much higher health definitely makes up for that. It has a total of 4 abilities, the first one making the Frost Spirit slam its scythe into the ground, forming a column of ice which stuns towers within it. Its second ability is a stomp, which not only stuns towers within the shockwave, but also halves their fire rate, crippling their DPS. Its third ability was a cold mist that it could produce, which would freeze all towers caught within it. And finally, its fourth ability would activate once it reached half health. This ability caused the Frost Spirit to begin floating, greatly increasing its walk speed all the way to below average, which is the same as what the Creator had. It's because of its insane abilities and massive health increase that I decided to rank it above the Creator. In third place, above the Frost Spirit, we have one of the most famous bosses in the game, the Umbra. The Umbra has 1 million health, which is the same as the Frost Spirit. However, its three abilities are much more powerful. For its first ability, the Umbra would fire its bow at the Star Cannon, lowering your base's health by 40. This had a cooldown of 60 seconds. This ability meant that if you didn't kill the Umbra fast enough, it could kill you without even reaching the end. This made it already much more threatening than the Frost Spirit and gave you much less time to kill it. For its second ability, the Umbra would shoot its bow into the sky, raining arrows upon towers which would stun them for 10 to 14 seconds. Its third and final ability would activate once it reaches half health which would increase its walk speed to slow and activate its first ability, damaging the base. Not only was the Umbra difficult, it was one of the highest quality bosses. Its animation and voice acting are honestly great and I wish it would make more events like this. Although, it's still only the third strongest boss. In second place, ahead of the Umbra, we got the final boss of hardcore mode, the Void Reaver. The Void Reaver has an insane 1.2 million health and an extremely slow walk speed. It has 6 total abilities. For its first one, it makes multiple purple spheres that stun towers that are hit. Its second ability is a stomp, creating a shockwave that stuns surrounding towers. Its third ability allows it to summon a void portal, spawning a multitude of enemies. Its fourth ability is arguably the strongest one. The Void Reaver slams a sword into the ground, creating a shockwave that stuns towers. For each tower stunned, a soul spawns, which have 800 health each. If you have a lot of towers, this could be a huge issue to deal with, especially when considering that all your towers are stunned. Its fifth ability activates at half health. The Void Reaver throws the sword at the base, reducing its health by 80. Luckily, this can't actually kill you and caps out at 1 HP. After this, the Void Reaver rips off its mask, gains a purple aura, and does a stomp ability while entering its Void Rage mode. In this mode, the Reaver can no longer use a Void Slam ability, however, the Void Portal ability gets a huge buff. Instead of summoning one portal, it now summons two, doubling the amount of enemies produced. This makes the Void Reaver super difficult to deal with, you kinda have to rely on RNG. Its sixth and final ability activates when it reaches 240,000 health. The Void Reaver raises his hand forward and increases his speed from extremely slow to average, the fastest out of any boss on this entire list. I think it's honestly really cool just how many phases this boss has and the fact that even when it gets low, it greatly increases his speed, making things way more stressful. Undoubtedly, the Void Reaver is one of the hardest bosses in TDS history. It's got powerful abilities, insane health, and can reach impressive levels of speed. But there's one boss that's even more powerful, the Nuclear Monster. It has 1.5 million health and an extremely slow walk speed. It has 6 powerful abilities, the first one being its summon. When used, the Nuclear Monster spawns some incredibly powerful enemies, such as the Abomination which has 20,000 health and can revive itself after dying. Its second ability charges up its right hand, slamming it into the ground and creating a huge shockwave, stunning all towers caught within its radius. Its third ability causes the nuclear monster to start shooting out balls of acid which explode upon impact and stun any nearby towers. Its fourth ability is a giant laser beam that shoots out of its chest that stuns any enemies caught within. Its fifth ability has a nuclear monster howl into the air, reducing the range of all towers by 50% for 8 seconds. This ability always activates when summoning enemies or when the boss reaches half health. 
When a nuclear monster reaches 750,000 health, it will activate its nuclear meltdown ability. It gains a green outline and its speed is increased to below average. After this, it will stomp three times in a row, use its laser ability, and then another random ability. Luckily, once it's activated rage mode, it can no longer summon amalgamations, abominations, and super toxics. Currently, the nuclear monster is the hardest boss in the history of TDS. As a most health ever, insanely powerful abilities is a hugely difficult boss to deal with. I think it's weird that despite having the hardest boss ever, the Wastelands 2 is the only special game mode that doesn't give you a tower upon beating it. That said, that's the 10 strongest bosses in TDS history. Before I end the video, I'd like to thank the Pirate Bay, Elixir US, John Doe 684, and Adam for supporting my content by becoming a channel member. If you'd like to help me out and get some special perks in the meantime, such as adding me as a friend on Roblox, consider becoming a channel member. It helps me out a lot and I really appreciate it. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed, hit that like button and subscribe to join the blue head mafia my name is corso and i'll see y'all in the next video